Hello, everyone. Santier here, and welcome to the Patron Podcast, my Patron Podcast, there might be others, for December 2021. Uh, this is a podcast where my patrons vote on a topic. Uh, you can join them to suggest and vote on topics as well on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Santier. So this month's winning topic was the long-running option that finally got voted of why is Revenge of the Sith my favorite Star Wars movie? Uh, and how would I rank from favorite to least favorite the Star Wars episodes? And is that different from how I'd rank best to worst? So a few disclaimers off the top. First of all, I'm only going to be dealing with the nine episodes here. I know there are other movies such as Rogue One uh, and the Han Solo one. I'm not going to worry about any of those. I'm just looking at the episodes. There will be spoilers probably coming up. I think it's kind of unavoidable. Uh, and a, this is very um, subjective, very opinion oriented. Um, even the what what do I think is, is best to worst and all that sort of stuff is very, very subjective. And I just want to call this out because everybody has a valid opinion. And what I think is more interesting is less what is your opinion and more why is your opinion. So I'm going to try to get into a lot of why I have the opinions I do about the Star Wars episodes uh, and get into that here. So hopefully we can have an interesting uh, interesting conversation here. So let's go ahead and start with that first question. Why is Revenge of the Sith, uh, so that's episode three, my favorite Star Wars movie? And the answer to that is because I really find it interesting to see how the Jedi lose Anakin. Uh, so we have Anakin Skywalker, who has been part of the Jedi Order. He's been working with them for quite some time at that point. Um, I mean, if you've watched the, the Clone Wars animated series you know that he's been working with them for quite some time again not going to focus on that particularly but what i think is really interesting is all of these little steps all of these moments where the jedi could have done a different decision they could have could have made a different choice about how they were interacting with anakin and probably not have lost him he probably would not have become darth vader um and i don't think the movie does a great job of portraying this like the moments are absolutely there if you know to look for them uh, but they're not given the sort of emphasis that i think would help them kind of stand out and i think like overall i like the prequel trilogy trilogies but i feel like they're a very interesting good story poorly told um due to a lot of directing and editing choices and things like that um so let's go ahead and, and zoom back here on episode three. So specific moments are, for example, when Anakin goes to talk to Yoda about the dreams he's been having about um, Padme's death. And Yoda's advice, basically, because he has to lampshade it because the, the Jedi have this uh, very ascetic code to them, which I think, <laughs> frankly, there's a strong argument that the Jedi Order has gotten corrupted. Um, and I think that's really interesting to examine as well uh, over the course of the prequel trilogy of has this gotten too organized? Has it ossified? Uh, and that's something that I think is kind of interesting to explore. Um, but, but we'll get into some of that stuff more when we get into the, the bigger things. Um, but so he, he needs to keep this relationship, his marriage to Padme, a secret because of the Jedi Order. But he really cares about her and he wants to go to somebody he trusts for advice. And that's Yoda. And what advice does Yoda give him? He says that he has to learn to let go of that which he fears to lose. Like, that's not a really good answer to, I have a spouse. <laughs> like, she's pregnant. I see her dying in childbirth. Uh, like, you have to be ready to let go of that. It's not a good answer to somebody in that spot. But that that's not the nail in the coffin. It's, it's a little nudge. And I'm not necessarily going to get these in order, but... There's the part where Obi-Wan is like, the Jedi Council accepts you, uh, like the, the Jedi Order accepts you on the Council, but they want you to spy on the Emperor. And he doesn't really feel like he's a part of the Jedi Council. Um, Anakin doesn't. He And he feels like, what has the Jedi Order become that it wants me to do this espionage? Like, he's my friend. They, they want to turn me against my friend. And it, it feels like has the Jedi Order lost its way? Has it lost its moral center when it's doing this sort of thing where it's like, we want you to do this spying stuff. Like, you want me to betray my friend? Um, and, like, that's another fairly significant moment, I think, where he's, like, beginning to question the moral authority of the Jedi Order when they're asking him to do this. Uh, and then a, a really key moment in my mind is when he discovers that Palpatine 
is Darth Sidious. He goes and reports to the Jedi Order. But the Jedi Order doesn't trust him. I think if they had extended trust and said, yes, you can come with us as we go to arrest Darth Sidious, as we go to arrest Palpatine, uh, that perhaps that would have been the last chance to not lose Anakin. But by refusing to trust Anakin, they've broken trust with him. Um, And their distrust of him means that he loses trust for them. And then he, when he goes to see what's going on himself, he's easily manipulated by Palpatine, who's able to manipulate the appearance of the situation because Anakin wasn't there to witness it from the start. And so you have all of these there. I, th- I feel like there might be a couple of other moments in there too, but he becomes very paranoid at that point. And, and that's where he has the, the confrontation with Obi-Wan um, and everything with, with where he's at. But it's just like this, this slide of where he's beginning to question how much can he trust the Jedi Order? How much can he rely on them? How much has their moral center gotten knocked off kilter? Um, and I feel like there's these moments where just like he's extending an, an opportunity for them to love him and show him um, trust that they choose not to do that for various reasons. In Yoda's case, it's because of the teachings of the Jedi Order. Um, in Mace Windu's case, it's because he doesn't trust Anakin. Um, and, and so you've got all of these little moments where Anakin feels, um, like the relationship between him and the Jedi order, it fractures until it fall, like falls apart and splinters. And I think that's really interesting. I think it's really interesting to see those moments where he's kind of just pushed off the edge by the choices that the Jedi order is making. Like, cause here's the thing. Palpatine doesn't win over Anakin. The Jedi order loses him. I think it's a really important and interesting sort of distinction, but that, that's how it appears to me anyway. And so I really enjoy that. Um, I will say I do wish the ending had been a little bit different, which requires a different setup. Um, I do wish that Padme had not died at the end, but had instead uh, fled to Alderaan with Leia um, just because now th- this is, this is where I get into kind of a general critique that I have. I overall, like I said, I like a lot of the stuff with the prequel trilogies, but it really doesn't feel like it connects properly into um, the original trilogy. Just for some terminology for those that aren't familiar, original trilogy is Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. Prequel trilogy is episodes one through three, um, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. And then the sequel trilogy, uh, I'm just going to be using this term, so I figured I should define them, which is an awkward moment to do it. But uh, the sequel trilogy is Force Awakens, uh, seven through nine, Force Awakens, uh, the Last Jedi and um, Rise of Skywalker. So that's a lot of the stuff that I like about uh, Revenge of the Sith. Like I said, I feel like the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy don't hook up exactly, and the stuff that I kind of would anticipate coming off of uh, the original trilogy doesn't feel like the prequel trilogy. Like it, it technically kind of touches on that stuff, but it doesn't feel like it aligns quite correctly. And they feel like. I feel like all three trilogies are slightly different continuities and that that's the way that my brain kind of resolves a lot of the stuff that doesn't feel like it quite fits because just the sense of what things had been before when Obi-Wan's talking about them in his hut in um, A New Hope, for example, it just doesn't feel like the state of the world when we actually see it in the prequel trilogy. Um, and then like stuff where Leia is talking about remembering her mother is like, how? Um, she doesn't really have an opportunity. Now, if she, if Padme had lived long enough and died uh, in an Alderaan, that would have given an opportunity for Leia to actually remember her mother. And, you know, if, if she had died when like Leia was like five or six or something, um, things like that would have helped connect them a lot more. But that obviously requires a bit of a different setup uh, to what's going on in uh, Revenge of the Sith. So, Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how would I rank from favorite to least favorite. So as I've already said, uh, episode three is my favorite. Um, I think my next favorite is Empire Strikes Back. And I think the original Star Wars, uh, episode four. This is one where those those ones, um, I feel like Star Wars and Return of the Jedi are kind of tied for me. Uh, and then Phantom Menace, uh, Attack of the Clones, Episode 8, The Last Jedi. And then I'm not quite sure which one's lower between The Force Awakens and Re- Rise of Skywalker. In part because I haven't seen Rise of Skywalker since theaters. Um, just to kind of give a little bit of 
why and, and all this sort of stuff. Um, why I put the sequel trilogy so low. Um, so I enjoyed Force Awakens quite a bit when it first came out in theaters and I first saw it. But it's a film that's very weird to me in that each time I've seen it, I've liked it less and less. Um, and on the other hand, I wasn't so fond of The Last Jedi. The more times I've watched it, the more I like it relative to the other prequels. Um, and so, or sequels rather, excuse me. So by the time we got to Rise of Skywalker, the general spot, knowing that J.J. Abrams was coming back uh, and frankly had an impossible task, the uh, episode eight was extremely divisive. And so he had a very difficult task trying to figure out how to reconcile everything. Uh, and I don't envy him that. Um, but given that, I really did not have high expectations for Rise of Skywalker. Like the way that I describe it, my sister and I talked extensively about these films uh, and, and walks that we take um, leading up to Rise of Skywalker and as well as that, like after seeing them and stuff. And one of the things that I remember saying to her frequently was my expectations for Rise of Skywalker are so low they're embedded in bedrock. Like they they are in the uh, the mantle of the earth. They're so low. It was basically impossible for Rise of Skywalker to not walk over them. And I enjoyed it in theaters, but uh, I also don't think it would hold up particularly well to repeat viewings. So I imagine I'll watch it again someday, but I am not in a hurry to do so because a lot of its plot is pretty nonsensical. Um, so this kind of brings me to some of the issues that I have with Force Awakens. Like I said, I enjoyed it in theaters. Um, I feel like the performances and stuff and in the tech obviously have improved since uh, the prequels were done. I feel like the performances were better. Um, I feel like the dialogue was better than a lot of the prequels. But to me, there's no depth. One of the things that I really like about both the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy is that George Lucas was doing a very specific thing. There was depth there um, in terms of what he was trying to accomplish uh, with like a distillation of various concepts. So we've got a uh, distillation of religion with the force. Um, we have uh, a lot of the hero's journey stuff. He was hugely influenced by Joseph Campbell's uh, hero's journey, uh, hero of a thousand faces and, and all of that sort of stuff. And Luke like is very trying to model that like, Star Wars is like a very quintessential cliche driven sort of or like cliche is not quite the right word archetype driven property like it, particularly the episodes it very much so is that and so you have things like the refusal of the call and uh, all of these sort of like and I don't have the the hero's journey memorized but it's got like this sort of circle where you go through like the underworld and, and things and um, I'm sure you can find essays that go into this in a lot more detail, but you can see that in Anakin's journey. You can see that in Luke's journey and it's very embedded in sort of the core. And so you also have that, but you also have, um, what seems to me a clear love of like samurai films. Uh, and I know Flash Gordon, like he originally wanted to make a Flash Gordon movie and couldn't get the rights as I understand it. And so kind of came up with Star Wars. So you have like, and, and Westerns are obviously also a heavy influence. So you have sort of these, these elements that are kind of like integrated and, and kind of uh, been blended together and into uh, our very interesting Star Wars sort of uh, world building and uh, storytelling and things. And and I find like the prequel trilogy is telling the fall, right? It's telling how did uh, a good man go bad? How did a republic, a, a democratic republic, uh, you know, democracy fall into uh, an, an empire, the empire that we see. Um, like it is, how did something that seemed to be at the height of civilization, how did all of these things fall? How did the Jedi order fall apart? Like how did all of these things fall? Very interesting, very interesting exploration that he did. I really enjoy that sort of world building and exploration. Um, and, uh, the original trilogy going on that sort of hero's journey and stuff. There's, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there. There's a lot of themes to talk about and a lot of things to dig apart. The Force Awakens, on the other hand, to me, feels like all it is is celebrating Star Wars. It's like, yay, it's Star Wars. Uh, and like, I have no idea, obviously, what the filmmakers' motivations were or what uh, the writer's thinking was or any of this. Uh, as an aside, I have no idea why Disney acquires a property known for making trilogies and then does not immediately plan out the trilogy. Why they made it into some sort of 
long form improv thing. Uh, I do not know why Ryan Johnson decided to be a bad improv partner and say no, but instead of yes, and to everything JJ Abrams set up, I also don't know. Um, but that aside, the force awakens to me feels like a little boy playing with action figures. Why is Luke Skywalker, um, gone off in the middle of nowhere why the heck is there a map to him why is their star chart missing a chunk why don't they just scour that area looking for luke because obviously you know he's in the missing chunk i mean i guess they don't have that but you know what i mean uh, and, until r2 wakes up but like why is there the section of them? it's it's it doesn't make any sense it just feels like it's trying to copy story beats from the original star wars because yay star wars i love star wars um and it, it just feels like a little kid's like like a little boy playing with action figures and it's like i just want to relive that movie uh, experience with my action figures and I'm going to like set up these beats and it's like why does this scene go into this scene what are the characters motivations I don't know um, I don't feel like the character motivations that drive you from one scene to the next are super well spelled out um, I feel like why did they revert all these things that had happened why did they say oh yeah that that new republic that we set up yeah it's fallen apart and there has to be this like resistance group fighting the first why is the world set up this way like that's that's a more interesting movie to me. It's like, how did we get from the end of Return of the Jedi to this? I don't know. Why is Luke Skywalker not involved? I don't know. I feel really badly for Mark Hamill that he basically did not get to play his Luke Skywalker in this whole trilogy. And, and he's the, the person I feel worst for in all of this. But... Like, it feels like a little boy saying, Luke Skywalker's the, the cool one that everybody wants to go find, so I'm going to stick him at the end, right? And it's just... That that's how again how it feels to me, and so once I get got past the the energy and the 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 I mean because it is fun because it's it's a little boy playing right that that's fun and when I got past the fun um, and I start looking at why is anything happening why are these things connected together it just be, it begins to feel very arbitrary and like it's the screenwriter saying now this happens instead of the characters having motivation to do things and this is part of why um the last jedi has risen for me as i've watched it more again below the original trilogy and the uh the prequel trilogy for me but nevertheless uh where it rises because it feels like it's trying to say something and like i will give it credit for that it feels like there's a depth there that is lacking in force awakens uh the characters feel like they have motivations that's driving the story forward and i will grant you a lot of the times it seems like they're making really stupid decisions but nevertheless they are like making decisions that are driving the story rather than it feeling like the writer is just like and now this happens um i do have like there's a reason though why last jedi doesn't get like it sits at the top of the the pre or the sequel trilogy pile but it doesn't get above that and that's because it violates a lot of world building things and a lot of those characters are making really really boneheaded seeming decisions i don't know why holdo doesn't trust poe more um you know it's his, the he's like an ace pilot like why is this plan not getting disseminated there are things that could have been done to help with that suspicions of a mole for example feeding the empire information or the i'm here i'm doing it too the uh the first order information things like that uh, could have done a lot but you know it's just one of those things where like these decisions seem kind of dumb like why are they making them it but and again the hold on maneuver is really 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 bad for world building um yeah so like for me things that matter most to me in stories are like world building and character motivation and like what what are the characters about and what are they doing and, and things like that but world building is also really really important to me so when we look at uh this thing this this maneuver is like why is this happening um i i need a good explanation for then why does this not propagate out into all of the world building so um i do like ray uh, overall as a character i am drawn to her in a similar sort of way that i'm drawn to like goku and gohan from dragon ball z and that i am drawn to two powerful characters like like wield characters that wield great power um that, that just appeals to me for whatever reason um personality trait um i wish more had been done with finn uh as my sister will frequently point out uh 
Finn represents a lot of wasted potential of things that they could explore with this guy was a stormtrooper. What does that mean? Does he want to be more of a pacifist and, and all that sort of stuff? Um, it feels really like it feels like J.J. Abrams was going for the novelty of somebody who was an ex-stormtrooper defecting without really analyzing the psychology of that. Um, so I've given you kind of an order of uh and, and like rise of skywalker is is just doing a lot of wacky stuff and is going all over the place with like it makes no sense with all the holocron locations and all that sort of thing but again like to me i, I take that one super like non-seriously it just feels like trying to, to repair any damage if it can uh and i don't know that it helped um i don't know why the film doesn't start with Palpatine speaking instead of just saying the dead speak, but here we are. So I will say that my rank, my ranking from favorite to least favorite is different from a ranking from best to worst, because when I'm looking at best to worst, I'm taking more things into account rather than what do I personally sort of just enjoy. Um, and when this happens, I think the original trilogy, like episode five, uh, clearly sits at the top in terms of like storytelling and world building and character things going on. Um, I think the episode four and six are much more like a lot more things are kind of tied as a lot more ambiguous where things kind of go because like the prequel trilogy does a lot of really good storytelling and world building, but it tells that story really poorly uh, and has a lot of issues that way. Um, I don't hate Jar Jar as much as some people do. I'm okay with him. Uh, but like he, he does undercut some of the, uh, gravitas. Um, and I, yeah, a lot of the performances have issues. I've heard there's a lot of instruction of faster and more intense, whatever the heck that means. Uh, so there's a lot of, and, and like, oh my goodness, in attack of the clones, the romance, romance in, in air quotes, uh, between, Anakin and Padme is incredibly unbelievable. Now, there is a five-year age difference between them. Uh, as Weird Al will helpfully remind you, uh, he's just nine and she's 14, but he's probably going to marry her someday. Uh, great song. Great song. Um, wh whose name I'm blanking on at the moment, but anyway. Uh, it's his Piano Man parody, if I remember correctly. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm getting into the weeds. Okay, so, like... I don't know why why they're electing a 14-year-old. My only guess is... And, like, Natalie Portman is significantly older than, than Padme is. Um, and it would have been very strange if they had cast somebody who was actually 14 years of age uh, in that role. Maybe she's 14 in Nabooian years, and maybe Naboo has significantly longer years than, uh, than Earth. And therefore, 14 might be an equivalent of, like, mid-20s in earth years i don't know but in that case the age difference is even weirder um so yeah she's supposed to be like five years his senior he comes off as a really like she's way more mature than him he comes off as like a horny teenager and has absolutely atrocious dialogue it is not at all like romantic it's ugh, it's a deeply unsettling romance again giant air quotes there um between them in attack of the clones it does not work for most of that movie for me at all it is my sister has to fast forward through them because of uh just how uncomfortably embarrassing she finds them and i understand very much why because it is not good uh so like i have to take that sort of ugh, into account because like the story behind the dialogue is interesting the actual dialogue is bad and so like the sequel trilogy has like better direction and things like that better writing and um, better character interactions so that raises it up relative to the prequels where a lot of the things that i really like about the prequels are like world building and storytelling that like you, you see what i mean where it's like they kind of end up in in more parallel areas where like these things on this one that in terms of like favorite to least favorite raise it 
like other things push it down when I'm looking at like best to worst. And like, I cannot argue that uh, like to me, episode five definitely is like the best, even if what I think they're doing in episode three is more interesting to me from a story- storytelling standpoint and therefore raises up to favorite. It's kind of a weird distinction, but um, that does mean that a lot of the the stuff in there, um, it, it's hard for me to determine where prequels and sequels should 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 slot relative to each other, but I do feel um, I feel like I put the original trilogy kind of like on top, where it's kind of like Empire and then Star Wars and Return of the Jedi kind of tied, and then kind of some sort of goo for I'm not quite sure where prequels and sequels go but this is one of those things that might change after another watch through the movies or something so it's it's a little bit a little bit less set than sort of the the favorite to least favorite sort of thing is um so i think this was a really interesting sort of thing to discuss if anybody has any further questions you are welcome to of course uh ask down below in the comments uh or you can also go to my patreon patreon.com slash center and submit a topic for us uh, for more star wars discussions if you so desire uh, so i'm going to go ahead and wrap up here thank you all very much for watching and listening i really appreciate it uh, until next time everyone take care and goodbye <laughs>